It's time for the latest episode of Let's Go Gaffer with head coach Patrick Leonard of Port Orchard Football Club. Coach, tell me what you thought of our 4-0 win over Grace Harbor goals on July 2nd. Yeah, I'd say if I look back at all our victories up to this point, that's the one where I can say I felt like we were the most complete. It was not perfect by any means, but I thought we were able to stick to the game plan that we as a coaching staff set out for the players. We worked on it with the players they bought in. Big focus throughout the week was defensive discipline and not giving up something cheap to the opposition. We were able to come out with a clean sheet, which we hadn't in a while, and still get four goals on a very good team. So, happy. You talk about the, the Grace Harbor game being a complete team effort. Uh, so let's take a little bit of time to compliment some of the standouts in the back, yeah. in the midfield, and you know, up front gets a lot of attention. So start in the back, what did you see for our defenders? Yeah, I, uh, we have a Isaiah Whitesell in goal on the day. He's been a guy that came in once the season was already going, but once we made contact with him and brought him in, he's been a perfect fit. He's been great. The goalkeeper group is it's just been a welcome addition to that group. Mark's been able to work with them. Caleb Tucker came in for a little bit on the day two, so they share the clean sheet, and Caleb Tucker's been here from the open tryout day one, and he's been one of the more experienced guys, one of the louder voices in the group. He's been an amazing leader. He's been a huge part of what this club wants to be, just character of the man within the club. It's, it's been amazing to have him be a part of it too. Defensively, we had Vic make his debut. I thought he was very solid. Aiden Harvey's played just about, if not every minute, this season so far and he's been a constant for us as well. It's just been piece by piece all of these things come together so as great as Devano is, as great as Jake McKenzie is on the days and Dom obviously this weekend getting two in a big game was great but the consistency in the back and just building up to letting those guys do what they do best it's just been a complete team performance. You mentioned in your quote that uh, Grace was there to sort of disrupt us. So yeah. a lot would fall on our midfield then. So tell me a little bit about uh, the performances you saw there. Sure. I mean, Sam Gomez, what is there to say about him? I think he's easily one of the best players in this league. He's easily the, probably the best player in this league. Um, Hunter was solid as a defensive midfielder for us. He kept things balanced throughout, and Connor just has an ability to – Connor Loudon, he's got an ability to find – whether it's Mike, whether it's Dom, whether it's Jake, he's just got an ability to find the front three and, and find them in spaces where they can thrive. And up top, we had the 13th and 14th goals from the leading scorer in all of the league, Division One and Division Two, Michael Devano. Yeah. And then a fun day for – our Hawaiian player, Dominic the Pajimolo, and his fans, the Dominators. <laughs> they were uh, what a moment for the club when he stood up on the bench and saluted everyone. <laughs> it was purely from the heart. It wasn't showboating. It was just excitement to be scoring a goal like that in front of his fans. Uh, you called that the best goal of the game. What did you see? Yeah, I think that was the best moment because, I, I mean, if we're talking pure finishing, I would say Devano's second goal could possibly be the best goal of the game but Dom on the third goal his first goal of the game I think that was just putting us in a position to be three nothing up on a team that was leading us most of the first game we played against them so it put us in a position where we were able to show um, control and I don't want to say dominance because I don't want to be disrespectful but able to show that we were the ones in control of that game and doing what we wanted to do implementing our style of play onto the game and I thought that was sort of just a moment where they all felt like, yeah, we're doing this, and like there was a bit of accomplishment within it. So with a big game and a big win behind us, 7-0-0, yeah. and, and now Sunday we have our last home game of the year, and then we're looking at the big picture too, which is trying to secure a playoff spot. So tell me about what's on your mind as head coach for the next few weeks. Yeah, I think what's great about this group is we have a really young core, and with that, that young age, there's an ambition and a hunger for success. These guys are still excited about the idea of winning trophies and doing things, and this club's just had a really exciting first season. But I say that because this group's been great about going step by step, game by game, session by session. And we, we take it one goal at a time, and this, this past weekend was a big checked box for us. And I, I mean, I think there's a strong chance we see them again in the postseason, but we have to get to the postseason first. And Twin Cities is next, where Again, no team is going to be the same result as the first time we played them. We saw that with Steel United, and we expected that with Steel. So game by game, we know it's going to be a tough task, and 
guys got to rise up to the challenge. And again, game by game, we'll get there. All right, Coach, thanks, and we'll visit with you again next week. Great, thank you.